I'm looking for a better way to educate my buyers. What's an easy way to prepare them for the buying process, start to finish? I think it's very important, specifically in the world that we're in. Number one, there's so many millennials buying homes, and even people who have bought homes before just aren't educated. And I'm the type of person, if you've watched me, you've learned, I like to set the expectation so it's crystal clear. I don't like for surprises, although it happened, I like for the client to have the expectation of what they can expect from me, and really, right, just as important, what I expect out of them. And so this is a, a guide and really a, a eight steps of buying a home. That way, when you're in front of a, a first time home buyer, a move up buyer, any type of buyer, you have a guide to help you have talking points so you're prepared and you look like the pro, but also so you can lay down the foundation and your value along with the expectations. And so I'm gonna go through these eight steps. I'm gonna go through them how I would probably talk to my buyer. Um, go ahead and change what you want. Think about how I say things. Think about what works for your type of client, your type of market. But I'm gonna go through it almost as if you were the buyer and we're gonna do a couple different head screenshots here so you can see both just so that you can see little things that I might say that you can pick up and apply to your own, right? Because you don't want to copy what I say. Pick your own personality and then add little fluff great items that you may hear me see or little tips and tricks. Besides that, let's get started. So guys, when you're sitting in front of the buyers, it's real important to truly articulate, I think, the first two steps together. The first two steps are just articulating your value. Hey, you know, Buying a house is stressful and, and there's, there's a lot that happens and my goal is to, to kind of shrink down everything that happens into eight sections and really the first two are already simple. You decided to buy a house and uh, you chose a top realtor and that's why we're sitting here today, buyer, right? And so that's kind of the, the section one and two. There's not a lot there, but you do want to put that out there in case you meet someone for the first time and they say, explain me the buying process. Those two steps I think are essential in order to articulate things and set the, the mood right away. Number three is the pre-approval stage. So I like to talk with my buyers and tell them, you know, first we have to get pre-approved. And they might already be pre-approved, but I like to talk about the pre-approval because sometimes they might use a really bad lender, and you guys know this, the lender can screw up a lot of things. And so my goal is to ask them and tell them how important it is to have a great lender. And then also, I have a great lender if they need a referral, so that's why I have this section three here. But I also like to say, hey, as a buyer, I don't, I, you know, I, I make no assumptions that you don't know this. And so you have an appraisal you're going to have to pay for, you have inspections you're going to have to pay for, you have a down payment you're going to have to pay for, and even some title, um, some title fees depending on how we negotiate this and it pans out. But I want to articulate that, that there are some costs to a buyer. And so I like to articulate that to the buyers, guys, is because I don't want there to be any confusion. Remember, this is set down for no confusion. It leads your eye not to wander on anything. It's very black and white. And so step three is talking about the pre-approval and the cost to the buyer. And if they actually have a lender that's good, the lender probably articulated this to them and you're just reaffirming it so that they know, hey, you know what? I, I didn't forget about this. I need to keep that in mind. And you always want them to keep this in mind because next thing you know, you go down the road, they buy a house and they forgot how much they needed down or they didn't have enough money for the appraisal and the home inspection. You want to set those expectations up front. Now, I always say number four, guys, is house hunting. Most fun part I find that home buyers love. They love to go looking at houses. And so this is your time where you need to explain to them that I'm going to set you up on my portal, right? We don't want them to always use the Zillow's or the Trulia's or the Redfin's and those are great apps, but I want them to use my portal. And so if you don't have one, then you need to find one. And most of you that I'm talking to, your brokerage probably provides some sort of way or your MLS to bring a buyer in and set up their criteria and then have them send emails out. And so what I do, and when I articulate this to my buyers, it's important that we use this one um, because I can see what you want, we can collaborate, you can send me things, I can see what ca just came in the market. And so you have to articulate your value of how to keep them in because here's what I find. Unless you 100% win them over, and I'm not saying you can't, they're looking at all these other ones. They're constantly getting advertised by other agents. My goal is to pull them in. Now, somebody may say, well, Tyler, it's not always the case. Sometimes they want to use a Zillow or Redfin. If they insist on it, guys, it's not my way or the highway. It's I'm going to try my best to get them to use my portal so they can see my face and my branding and my phone number every time a property pops up. But if I can't, guess what? I'm going to do the best I can, right? You don't always have the ability to do that. And most of the time you do, but there are some circumstances where you don't, but your goal is to articulate your value of why they should use your portal opposed to the others. That way they actually can see your advertising and not all these other agents that they're trying to sell leads to. Next is the making an offer stage. Now before you actually 
talk about the making an offer stage, I always like to say, hey, we're gonna look at properties. There's gonna be sometimes you're out looking at properties without me, right? You might be at an open house, going to Home Depot, doing something, and you see an open house and you go in, realtors are like vultures. They come and they attack and they get asking for all this information. Let me put you on my list, let me spam you, let me email to you, let me door knock, let me do all this stuff. I always give my clients some of my cards. So if you go into open house, all you have to say is, hey, can't wait to see the house. I've got a realtor, that's their name, and what they'll do is they'll leave you alone. So I always recommend give your clients a stack of your cards. That way if they do go to open houses, they don't need to put down all their email and their information. They can just say, yep, I got a realtor and here's their card, and that person can follow up with us, right? And so I think that's a really important step. As you meet your client, as you meet your buyer, set that expectation up front. All right, so now back to making an offer. Making an offer, I think you have to explain to them of your value prop. A lot of buyers used me because of my negotiation skills and the research I did in order to present the best offer. So here I'd say, my goal as your realtor is to make sure you have the best terms to get the deal done, right? Now I don't mean the best terms for the seller, I mean the best terms for you, my buyer. I represent you. And so not only when I submit your offer, I do a lot of things prior to that. So I'm out working hard, I got my real estate hat on for you. So one, I actually look at all the other homes around there, same square footage, same size and everything to make sure that we're actually not writing an offer that's overpriced or that's not competitive, number one. Number two, I call the listing agent. You know, I, I have a big network. I know a lot of listing agents out here. We're great friends, but I call them to see if there's any info they can give me. Hey, is the seller motivated? You know, why hasn't it sold yet? You know, do you have any offers? I call and have that dialogue. I never want to just submit with, with assumptions that I'm the only offer, because guess what? This market, there's multiple offers. That's not a scenario that, that, that is not out there. And so I, I, I want you guys to think about making an offer. This is where you want to articulate your value of not only do I make an offer, but I do research to make sure we're getting the best value. And I understand how hot the market is and I've checked to see if there's other offers. You're showing your value of this step, step five, making an offer. Step six, I think is really important because you're setting up the foundation for the close, right? And so the first thing I like to do when I talk about we're under contract is, when we, once we get under contract, there's a couple things that have to happen. Time is of the essence, meaning we have inspections and we have dates that we have to meet these inspections by. So there's a home inspection I recommend. Obviously, if there's a pool, I recommend a pool inspection. If there's a chimney, I think you get a chimney. Whatever those inspections are in your area, pest, termite, et cetera, always recommend the inspections, but I, I tell my buyers that we have to get these and there's deadlines because I wanna make sure that your deposit is safe, right? And so I wanna make sure also that we have all of the forms and all of the disclosures in front of us that way you know that you're making the right decision. You're buying a house that's not gonna fall down or burn down or has leak issues or mold or anything. And so my goal is to make sure we order these fast, get them back to you fast, let you and your spouse or your, your family or whoever they are, look at them, analyze them so we know that we can remove the contingencies and move forward. And so I gotta tell you, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, that um, this does cost money. And some folks will always say, you know, why do I wanna pay this? You know, what if it has mold? I look at this almost as insurance, right? I would rather buy a house that is clean than buy a house that has problems because I didn't wanna pay for the inspections. And this is part of the price of buying a home. It, it, you're buying this to make sure you're setting yourself up for a great foundation, great walls, great brick and mortar, a great house overall. And so I think you guys have to explain the process of, you know, we have seven days till we have to remove contingencies, right? Um, you know, we have to remove inspection contingencies, we have appraisal contingencies, I have to bring in the lender. Explain the process to them of going under contract. Next is the closing. And so this is where I really like to talk to the, 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 the buyer and say, okay, do they have another house to sell? Is this their first house? Do they have a, 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 a rental agreement that they have to give notice to? I like to remind them that, hey, you know what? We have 30 days till we're closing. We, if you remember when we talked in the beginning, we have to put the notice in at your apartment or the rental or, hey, we probably need to get your house or we need to take out money, whatever that may be. I like to remind them of the closing process and what happens. And then the last thing I like to do is really talk about um, the post-sale services. You know, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, you know, our, our agreement doesn't stop after the sale. I'm, I, I don't come and, and get a commission check and I leave. There's a couple of things that happen. So first and foremost, I throw you a housewarming party. Um, I throw the house room party for you and it's a great thing. I want you to invite all your friends. I'm gonna bring in some food and some light appetizers, um, but I throw a house room party for you. Further, when January comes, I know you're busy. You're gonna get all this paperwork. You're gonna forget about it. I'm gonna actually send you the HUD-1. And you, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that and give that to your accountants. That way you can get the tax write off of the home ownership, right? And, and, and also, I know that you know, we, we're gonna probably talk and see things that you need done, whether it be something that comes up in an inspection or you wanna remodel. 
I've got a list of the best professionals in this area. I'm a local expert, as you know. I have a list of all the plumbers, painters, contractors, etc. So anytime you want to remodel, if you need a great recommendation, I'm here for you. So I don't want you to think once the deal closes, we're not going to be in contact. You know, I, I represent my buyers year after year after year. We, we have a great relationship. They turn into friends. I'm, I think the same thing's going to happen with us, so I don't want you to be surprised. I'm going to be reaching out to you after because I want to continue this relationship and I like to work with people that I have a great relationship with. And so I, I think what you guys can do is you can see some of the pros that I say there and then look and say, how do I take what Tyler said and match it to my style, right? There's some good nuggets in there that I think you have to go over. And I think what you guys can do is make it your own. Don't get caught up with writing exactly what Tyler says. What I do in my company now is I like to just sprinkle my two cents and then people take it and apply it to where it fits what they want. And I want you guys to apply this to where it fits with you. This is you. And the buyers are connecting with you. They're not connecting with me, they're connecting with you. And so make this your own. Take nuggets that I gave, present this, practice, and then guess what? Use it in front of those buyers. It's gonna come in handy. Good luck. <laughs>